Hi, Cat's Cradle here. Goat Hollow posted a video, I believe it was this morning, that I found intriguing. I love his videos because he always gives me something to think about. And this morning he was talking about a video someone else had made talking about storing ketchup, how much they love ketchup, and uh, lots of people do. And he said, uh, so how much of that are you going to store? And how long is it going to last? And what do you do when that runs out? You know, how are you going to make ketchup? And he talked about the components of ketchup, the tomatoes, which of course we can grow, and the vinegar that's in it, which he has learned to make. And then he talked about sweetener. What are we going to do for sweetener? And he said, you know, how much sugar are you going to store? It will run out eventually as well. And I don't know about you, but I can't grow sugar. I can't grow, I don't have enough uh, land to grow beets, and I don't have the right climate to grow sugar cane. So I have to find an alternative sweetener. Paladin Prepper, even as I'm uh, videoing this, has left to go to the lumberyard to get the remainder of the supplies he needs to build a top bar beehive, and you could certainly make ketchup that is sweetened with honey. But I have an alternative for you. And the challenge Doug gave uh, when he tagged several people at the end of his video was to find something that you want to have and you want to be able to use from here on out. And it doesn't even have to be food. It could be anything. It could be, you know, shoes or clothing or anything. Something that you, your family is going to need. And how are you going to make that happen when there is no store? And there is no store for years. How are, how are you going to make it happen? So I just decided to build directly on his ketchup thing and to speak to how I would sweeten it. And even uh, honey is, the production of honey is a very delicate balancing act. I watched a, a, a fiction movie last night, but it was from uh, kind of colonial age time. It actually took place uh, in Europe somewhere, and uh, one of the characters in the video came into the house screaming because her bees were gone. They had swarmed and left. Uh, before the movie was over, they eventually returned, which was good to see, but uh, that's a concern. You know, a whole hive can leave. Uh, with colony collapse disorder, a whole hive can die, or they can freeze in the winter, or they can starve, or lots and lots of things can happen. So bees are not bees are not a uh, a, a sure deal. Although I certainly you know recommend uh, trying to trying to have bees, which is what we're going to do. Um, and and Doug didn't ask anybody to solve the solution about how to have more ketchup. It just so happens that one of the things I'm interested in is how to have sweetener when you don't have granulated sugar anymore. So I'm going to show you how to make this. This is something I've thought through to the very uh, logical end conclusion. And this is apple syrup. The only thing that is required to make it is unsweetened apple juice and heat. This is approximately 64 ounces of apple juice that have been boiled down to a syrup. I plan to be able to make this forever because I have apple trees. Uh, you can check a video that I posted this week where I showed you my espaliered apple trees. And we're going to have more uh, that are planted in the neighbor's yard. You can make this with apples or pears, either one of those uh, fruits can be pressed to extract the juice and then boil down to make a syrup. It would be perfect for making ketchup because it is slightly tart, just slightly, but it's incredibly delicious. So really, if you have uh, vinegar and tomatoes and a sweetener and some of the spices that generally go into ketchup, you could make it. Not only that, but you could make many things with this. Uh, you could use it to sweeten cakes or cookies or just anything you would use sugar for. It would take some tweaking and you would have to experiment just a little bit. 
uh, but this is this is a perfectly viable alternative to uh, granulated sugar. So let me show you how it's done. Okay, today for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using this jug or a portion of this jug of 100% apple juice that's unsweetened because although I intend to do this with my own apples, I'm not quite to that point yet. My apples have not produced yet this year uh, and I also have not made an apple press, but that's in the works. Uh, so I'm going, <clears throat> I hope to be doing this with my own apples soon, but today I'm going to be using this just so I can demonstrate the process for you. So I'm going to use about, probably about 64 ounces, <clears throat> pardon me, of this 96 ounce container because Prepper A wants me to save some uh, out for her to drink. So here I'm going to pour this into my stainless steel pot. So if there's 90 and using 60, um, 60 ounces, I'm going to use about two-thirds of it. A little more. Smells good already. Okay, that's as much as I'm going to use. I'm using this nice big stainless steel pot because this process is simply evaporation. So the more surface area I have, the larger diameter my pot, the more evaporation I'm going to get. So I'm going to turn this on about uh, a medium. For me, that's four on my uh, electric range. And I'm going to let that simmer. And it should take about an hour and a half to boil down to the consistency of syrup. And I will stir it periodically just to be sure nothing's sticking. But you can actually look straight to the bottom and see that, and you can see how everything's going. It's going to be a beautiful dark brown color when I finish. Right now it's a dark amber, but it will be even darker than that. And I will show you when I get it boiled down. And I will, uh, right now it's 1024 when I'm starting. And I will uh, check the clock when it's done and let you know exactly how long it took. But truly, uh, the wider the pot, the better. And I really highly recommend uh, a stainless steel pot if you, if you can manage that. Okay, so we back, we back in uh, probably about an hour and a half. All right, it's 11.54. It's been almost exactly an hour and a half. Here's where we are on our syrup. You can see how little of it is left in the pot. What I like to do to test it is take a little out with my spoon. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. I'm going to put it, whoops, I'm going to put it a few dribbles in this cold, cold, um, what's that called for a break? <laughs> spoon rest, in the cold spoon rest. And then what I'm going to do after it sits there just a second is I'm going to tilt it. Yeah, and it barely runs. Now it's still hot. And then I can blow on a little bit, drag my finger across it. And mm. it leaves a streak, a streak stays. Mm. And it looks like that, and it's syrup. Mmm, mmm, mmm. And it is delicious. Now what I've done here, because I don't want to let this cool in the pot, because then it'll be difficult to get out. I want to go ahead and pour it while it's hot. So here I've got a canning jar that I have poured boiling water in, so I've got my jar really hot. I'm going to dump that into my dishwater right now. And then I, ooh, just stay right there. It's really hot, so be careful. All right, now I've emptied it. Actually, move over here, Prepper. I'm going to get it off my cold kitchen counter and come over here where it's warmer. And then I'm going to carefully pour this into that jar. Give me a little room. You need to back up just a little bit. Okay, here we go. Really hot. You do not want any little kids around while you're doing this. Besides the camera person. <laughs> Besides the camera person, but she's pretty mature. I've got more than I thought. Let me let the foam go down a little bit. Just give it a little time. The foam will settle. Stop that. I'm going to put it back here so it stays warm. Yeah, it's real foamy. If the foam will go down, then I'll have room in that jar. In fact, I may just coax it down a little bit. As it uh, cools, it will settle. And I'm going to pour the rest of that in there. And 
I'll show you what we end up with, but I wanted you to see me pouring it. Well, let me see if I can get this in there now. Pouring the dog. They see, they see palette and prep last time. They're excited. So I did get every bit of it in there. And when the foam settles, I'll show you how much it ended up being. So we'll come back in just a few minutes. Prepper A had me skim a little bit of the foam off the top of the syrup. And if you want to tell them what you think about it, you can see it looks very much like caramel. Obviously, if she had me put more in the bowl or more in the spoon rest, she loves it. It's, it's very, very concentrated apple flavor because of the evaporation. And it's basically an apple sugar and it tastes great. Do you love it? Yes, I do. I think it'd be great to sweeten anything like a uh, top of oatmeal, sweetened oatmeal, um, and maybe you can drizzle it over a top of a, a, a biscuit, mm, or, yeah. or, or cornbread. Oh, doesn't that sound good? It does sound yeah, good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an intense, delicious flavor. It is a little bit tart. Uh, I got almost a half a pint out of that, and I, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this, I almost made candy out of it because when I was pouring the last little bit of it, it started to string. And if you've made candy, you know that, that it, when, it, when it reaches uh, the hard uh, crack stage, it will make strings. So after I got it in this jar and I skimmed a little of the foam off for Prepper A, I did pour a little bit of boiling water in there to thin it out. And that's perfectly fine because all you've done to the apple juice anyway is evaporate the water off. And if you went too far, just put a little water back in and then you've got the perfect consistency of syrup because you can see when she runs her finger through this. I mean, it's not even really syrup. It's, it's very gummy. So uh, now I've made this the right consistency. But there you are, Doug. A perfect sweetener for your ketchup. And all you have to do is press the juice out of your apples to make it. Very, very simple. I will tell you that we are ordering more apple trees today. We have no land left, but we have negotiated, I'm sorry you're seeing my sour crack here, I haven't cleaned my table off from the last shopping trip. Uh, we have negotiated with our neighbor next door who is an elderly uh, gentleman who never ever goes in his backyard and there's plenty of room back there for some fruit trees and he knows that if we buy them and we tend them that we will share the harvest with him and he's perfectly um, delighted for that to happen. Uh, we have talked with him and he knows that when he leaves this world, uh, he has no living relatives, none. And uh, he would be perfectly uh, happy if we bought that property. And that's our intention. And I think pretty much everybody around here knows that. So uh, not that that's a done deal, but uh, in all likelihood, that will be ours anyway. So uh, and even if not, we're happy to have the fruit now and happy to share it with him and grateful for his generosity. So more apple trees for us because I can make apple syrup, uh, which is absolutely delicious. I think if you try it, you'll love it. I uh, hope you give it a chance. Uh, it's just an alternative uh, sweetener. Cat's Cradle.